Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about McAfee Safe Connect VPN. Someone in my Discord channel recommended I check it out. And I'm gonna do that today. If you guys wanna help support the channel, go ahead and check out VPN tier list where you can find all my VPNs ranked. Check out some of my merch and all these will be down in the description down below. So guys, let's find out if this is the best VPN or just another number in all the list of mediocre VPNs out there. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at McAfee Safe Connect <laughs> application. And for this company being around for so long in designing applications, I kind of expected it to look a little bit better. Now, you know, here on the channel, I'm not a huge critic if a VPN doesn't look that good. But I do like to have good navigation and, I mean, the interface to work good. And I don't really like this one too much. Besides it just being overall very plain, I don't like how you can't immediately kind of see what, you, what each one of these does. You have to kind of click right here and then do it. Not a huge deal, but just kind of annoying. Um, there's like, why does there need to be this thing here? It's just like some kind of log. And then you have your account thing. And then, you know, here we go. And it's just, it feels like there's kind of too many extraneous buttons here. I would just kind of prefer there to be this little setting icon. But it's ironic because for all the little icons they have, they actually doesn't have very many settings at all. We're going to run it through the application analysis just in a second, but it's not going to be very hard to fill out. Going back to the main kind of uh, thing here. This is what it looks like. It looks like we're not going to be able to favorite servers or anything like that. Or I'm not sure if you can pick specific locations. It just will let you connect to, I guess, one overall country, which is definitely disappointing. And it looks like it's not even connecting right now. Um, let's go ahead and try again. This looks like it might be working a little bit better. Nope, nothing's working now. Well, this might be the case where I might need to restart my computer before we get any further just to make sure it's even going to work at all. So guys, I did uninstall it and now it works. Okay. So guys, as suspected, uh, this did not do well on the application analysis. It's pretty much missing every single feature I look for, like kill switches, advanced protocol options like WireGuard, IkeV2, ad blocking features, split tunneling, proxy support, ability to customize your DNS and port scripts to make it more customizable, ability to favorite servers, view performance stats on different servers. Really the only thing that it has is the ability to switch servers while live use. As you can see, like it's like that. Still kind of clunky though. Overall though, it has a clunky interface. It's not very good looking and it doesn't have any features to boot. So this might be one of the worst applications I've ever reviewed. Additionally, it was also pretty buggy to get working and I had to uninstall it just to get it working. Overall, not very good guys. Now we're testing out some of the speeds from McAfee Safe Connect to see what kind of speeds we can get. Now remember, it didn't let me really choose where I could connect from, so I'm assuming it's using some kind of smart connect, smart location feature, which isn't, I mean, the worst idea, but it's still annoying. You can't further customize it by location, location. Every other VPN lets you choose a specific location. This one, however, only lets you pick a country. These speeds aren't that great. This upload's actually not bad. Ping isn't bad. Download is pretty low. Usually I get around a gig here, but this isn't always the best indication. So let's go ahead and try a torrent test. So testing out McAfee to see what kind of speeds it gets with torrenting is an exercise in futility because it looks like it does not support peer-to-peer -peer connections. As you can see, the torrent is stalled and is not downloading. So it fails the torrent test and I can give it a good result for speeds because I could barely even test them. Damn it. <laughs> So guys, if you want to see one of the worst logging policies I've ever seen, just go check out this one. Because McAfee collects information. They honestly just say that. In order to provide our services, we collect information. Wow, that is so general. But if we look more about the information they collect, they collect details about your computer, devices, applications, and networks, including internet protocol addresses, cookie identifiers, mobile carrier, Bluetooth device IDs. I honestly could write a novel about how much stuff they collect. What the heck is going on? No thanks. So McAfee Connect does not work with Netflix. 
The way you could tell is that by searching Twilight Zone, even though I'm based in the US with this application, it's not showing me the Twilight Zone. It's only showing me Netflix originals, which pretty much every single VPN can do. I look for VPNs specifically that can unblock G restrictions and give you unique content libraries. So let's say I'm in J J Japan, I could use a VPN like some of my tier one options that will give me a specific unique category of content only available on the USA version of Netflix that's different than any other version. So this one is just giving me, what is that a picture of? Jeez Louise. This is just giving me the Netflix originals, um, which you could, it's not special. It's not working for streaming basically is what I'm saying. So in terms of customer support, well, they don't have any live chat and you just pretty much have to go through the company. They have a virtual assistant, which is kind of like a robot and you can request a refund or whatever here on this page, which is their kind of main support page for just the general McAfee products, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and request a refund and see how that goes. But I can't really give them that big of marks here because I honestly think the support's gonna be slower because it's a bigger company that's kind of been around for a while that has different products and they don't have live chat, so yeah. Another annoying thing that bugs me is that it requires you to provide the information just to get a refund. Why would I want to give them my phone number? I can't even remember what the first and last name I put on this account because I was using anonymous information. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a refund. Honestly, I'm not even going to bother because I can't provide this information. I don't want to provide this information. It was only seven bucks, so screw it. We could talk a little bit about the pricing and now it's only $8 a month, which isn't bad, but it gets kind of confusing when you think about it really long term, I guess. You only get five simultaneous devices as well. But the yearly plan is only $35, which doesn't seem bad, but then it has a stipulation of only being for the first year. And when I try to go to see more details about this, it's just confusing. It's basically just saying you could be charged this price, but maybe next year it'll be charged something d different. And there's no explanation of when or how much it will increase by. So it could double for all I know or something like that. I couldn't find any information on the website by how much the price will increase. So for this lack of transparency, I don't like this pricing plan. I don't like how weird it is. Although, you know, there it's not too badly priced in terms of, you know, what's offered here. I just can't even really find out, you know, how much it could increase if you stay subscribed after a year. So that's really annoying, really annoying. So the final rating is going to be a 1.33 out of 5. Overall, this is a pretty bad VPN provider. The application is pretty much completely void of any kind of features at all. Missing protocols, kill switches, pretty much stuff I would consider mandatory for your VPN to have. The pricing system, while cheap for the first time in a year and month, it kind of lacks transparency with how much it could increase by with that stipulation that kind of concerns me. Speeds seem to be pretty laggy while general browsing and stuff like that. And I couldn't even get it to work with torrenting, which suggests it doesn't support PDP activity, which is one of the reasons why people use VPN in the first place. Reputation, I'm not going to give them that many points either because the logging policy is probably one of the worst ones I've ever seen. And McAfee, the company itself, just kind of seems like a company is just kind of sitting around still, kind of living off the McAfee brand name, when in fact, I don't really think they do that much or create that interesting of products. Support, um, I'm going to give it a little bit lower than normal, even though, you know, they do have support. They don't support live chat. I don't like the amount of information they're requiring just to send in a ticket. Streaming didn't work with anything as well. So that's just the score that it's going to be. If you guys want to see another VPN reviewed, go ahead and let me know in the Discord channel. If you want to see all the VPNs I've ranked, go ahead and check out the tier list. And of course, if you want to help support the channel, click on some links down in the description down below. And I'll see you again on the next video very soon.